So you may be wondering why we bought a fire truck and the short answer is because it's awesome. So this is as far as you got without chains, huh? Yup. Uh, unsurprisingly, fire trucks aren't great in the snow. Yes, she's free. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yes! <laughs> she just needed those chains. Little slip at the top, but nothing crazy. So this is our new to us, 1965 American La France fire truck. And uh, we have a few exciting ideas of what we could do with it. Uh, the simplest is use it around the property as a water truck for the track and do stunts on, in, and around it. Uh, use it as a fire truck if we happen to set things on fire and you know just keep it going for that kind of stuff. So that's, that's one option. Uh, what I really want to do with it uh, which would be a lot more work, but way cooler, is turn it into a toy hauler. So swap out that giant gasoline engine for a more modern diesel, maybe an automatic transmission so it's not a workout to drive. And then like convert the back section where the water tank is into storage for smaller builds like the power wheels. And then maybe make some ramps so you could even drive like a full size Tacoma or whatever vehicle up on top of that whole platform there. You know, get rid of all the fire truck stuff and just make it into a really sweet giant toy hauler. Taco make... ramp is a must. Yeah. <laughs> the taco yeah. parked on top of this thing is the coolest looking thing ever. Yeah, the taco or the ute or like the jag if we make it four wheel drive, just any yeah. of those things. That would be so cool. First we'll just kind of you know, explore the whole thing and see what it is and what it's got to offer. I've been wanting to start a Discord community for a long time so we can share some unseen photos and talk about your guys' builds and just have a nice organized space where we can do all that. And this video is actually sponsored by Discord, so this is the best time to talk about it. On our Discord, you'll find a tab for all of the current builds that we're working on where we'll share pictures and talk about ideas and show you guys just detailed little pieces that Ethan made that don't exactly make it into the videos. And what I'm really excited about is the fan build section where you guys can upload your builds or talk about your ideas and other people can help you with them. It should be a really cool, really great community. And that's the kind of thing that happens on Discord. I'm excited for you guys to hop on Discord and chat with us and talk to each other. I know that there's so many like-minded people who watch our videos and I think it's going to be a great place to hang out. So definitely check out Discord, download the app using our link in the description. And then for your first community, if you join Grindhard Plumbing Co, we'll start chatting. I did a little bit of research on it this morning and it's uh, it's a 1965 American La France 900 series pumper truck and um, it's got a 608 cubic inch inline six engine which produces horsepower. I don't know how many. I <laughs> couldn't find that information and many torques. Uh, it's got a four speed transmission with manual transmission with uh, low gear so technically a five speed and uh, it has a water tank that holds somewhere between 300 and 750 gallons of water, I think. <laughs> Finding information on this thing's not that easy, but American La France is a company that uh, has roots all the way back to 1832, but was founded in 1873 by a guy who has the perfect name, Truxen La France. His name was literally Truxen. 
<laughs> and he built fire trucks. Anyway, the company existed all the way up until 2014 in some fashion, so that's pretty cool. A lot of history there, but it looks awesome. It drives great. I mean, it drove up this hill in the snow, which is pretty impressive for a truck that weighs, as far as I could figure out, about 19,000 pounds empty and 23,000 pounds full of water. That thing's unstoppable with chains. Another really cool thing. It's the uh, it's the old Naples Volunteer Fire Department truck. And Naples, Idaho is like, a, if you were to draw a straight line on a map, it's probably the nearest thing that was once a town to where we are. It's uh, It's very loud because you're sitting right there and the engine's like right behind you with very little sound deadening. So it's not a quiet ride but uh, it's a pretty smooth one. You've got your battery switch here. You've got battery one, battery two, and then both. And then you've got your uh, ignition here. Uh, it's got separate ones, so I just turned it to all. That seems to work well. And then you've got your starter. There's starter A and B. I don't, I, I don't know if that means there's two starters or if they're just two starter solenoids, but both of them do something, so. Fires right up and purrs. Up front, way in front of the tires, we've got the cab, which is super cool. That's like, that's my favorite thing about this and really the main reason why it caught my eye on Marketplace and why we bought it. It's just because of how incredibly cool it looks. You know, you've got a big bench seat for passengers and then the driver's seat, which is a little taller up there. Of course, we've got all the switches and sirens and stuff in here. Let me reach around here and turn on the uh, battery. It has no key. Um, it just has a giant switch to turn the batteries on uh, to connect everything. So, which makes sense for a uh, emergency vehicle. You wouldn't want to be like, Dang it, where'd I put the keys? We can't get to the fire. <laughs> but anyway, so we've got, uh, we've got our siren. <laughs> That's loud. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, let's see, let's see if the uh, PA works. Oh, I think you'd turn the gain down probably. I would assume, I assume that was all the way up. I'll try it both ways. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, mic doesn't exactly work. That's pretty cool, we've got... My neighbor's gonna get real confused now. <laughs> <laughs> In the cab, there's actually surprisingly few controls compared to what's outside. Headlights, the flashy lights, mirror defrosters, and then some external lights and stuff. On the odometer, it's got 22,000 miles on it, which is believable, but who knows how accurate that is because the speedometer doesn't work. All the other gauges seem to work though. The tachometer works, the um, fuel gauge even works, the uh, oil pressure, amps, engine temp, those all seem to work. And uh, oh, hey, what do we have in here? Some uh, earplugs. <laughs> yep, you need those for driving this thing. Oh, and it's got these little uh, compartments here to let in extra air for the, uh, for the radiator because the radiator's like right behind the seats. Big rounded front, giant slopey windshield and these big dual headlights that are extremely dim. <laughs> the logo is really cool. It's like this, you know, fire engine logo, but then in the middle, it's like a representation of an atom, which is super cool. So are you gonna need a special license to drive it? Are oh, we gonna yeah, need to get sure. truck certified? I mean, I would, uh, I'd have to look into it, but um, I would assume that for something this large, you definitely need a commercial driver's license. So we'll look into that. I might have to get, get one of those to be able to legally drive this thing on the road. We've got the, you know, fireman seats back here. Man, this is gonna be sweet. Just like cruising around the property, having people ride in the back. <laughs> These came with a few different options for engines. Uh, 
when this was made in 1965, the diesel was already an option. Sadly, we didn't get that. That would have been a uh, Detroit 671 turbo diesel. So that would have been cool. But what we got is the uh, big old inline six gasser with dual ignitions. So it's got a distributor here, coil, set of spark plugs, a whole separate one down here with a whole separate coil and spark plugs. So I would assume without being able to find any more information on it, that that is for uh, redundancy as well as maybe extra spark. But that way, if one ignition goes out, you can switch to the other one. This is massive. This is definitely the biggest <laughs> gas engine I've ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely enormous. I mean, look at this alternator. <laughs> it's got a triple V belt driving it. Some of the older models came with a Rolls-Royce V12, which is cool. Uh, but in 19... Uh, 65, I think they are 64, whatever. One of the years they had an experimental model that had a jet engine in it, a turbine, a gas turbine engine. Uh, sadly, they only ever made three of them, including the demonstration model. Can you imagine a jet engine fire truck? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's cool. The pump is right in between the drive line there. These, as far as we can tell, are all the output, uh, the outlets for the water pump. So you've got these ones here. There's some on the other side. There's one on the back. And so those are all numbered for each output. Um, and then uh, it's got this hose reel up here, which, as far as I understand, does work. I like how it's just a free spool so you can just grab it. <laughs> If we ever have a vehicle catch on fire here. <laughs> we are set. We are so set. Oh, well, that'll make your hand cold in half a second. Firefighter Ethan reporting for duty. <laughs> you know what's funny? I, I have this memory from when I was, I don't know, a small child. Uh, I remember one of them at seeing me as a little kid and asking me, Oh, do you want to be a firefighter when you grow up? And I was like, no. <laughs> they were like, uh, they didn't know what to do. They're like, every little boy wants to be a firefighter for some reason. Never my dream, but here we are. We've got a fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this thing's sturdy. The water tank is, <laughs> you could put a lot of weight on here, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite sturdy. Um, yeah, and then up here, I assume these are all access panels for the pump stuff. Oh yeah, that's the, that's where you fill up the water tank. And there's a hose with the proper fireman handle. Yep. Good old nozzle there. Man, if we put a big rack, we could fit like the Taco and the Triumph up here. <laughs> yeah. Just drive one of them right up on top of the front of the cab. And, yeah. Yeah, that would be really cool. And this course, would be the coolest gear hauler ever. Oh, absolutely. Really want to take this thing to Moab. That should be the goal. Yeah. <laughs> Make it good enough to drive 15 hours to Moab. <laughs> In its current state might take a little more than 15 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mentioned that uh, the real reason we got this is just because it's cool, but also uh, it was just an incredibly good deal. We couldn't pass it up. We got this entire fire truck for 1500 bucks. Uh, I mean, largely because who actually wants a fire truck from 1965, but it runs and drives and it was 1500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> How could you turn that down? Straight up cheaper than our Sprint car. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Plus now we own a piece of North Idaho firefighting history. We're gonna go down the hill so we can show you guys the hill climb. But while Ethan's got it down here, he wants to try some donuts in the field with the chains on. <laughs> we'll see if she has the power to do that. And here comes nearly 20,000 pounds of awesome. <laughs> well, now I can add to my resume, drifter of fire trucks. You did drift it. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm not used to having this much truck sticking out in front of my tires.
Without chains, you'd be pulling cookies like nobody's business. Yeah, for real. And then I'd get stuck. Well, with a single set of chains, it can go up icy and snowy hills, drift, and do half a donut. <laughs> That's a good start. But when we're done with it, it'll have a lot more power and probably weigh a lot less, so <laughs> that'll be sick. 